Team Dodge has not put one in the win column all season. And watching more and more opportunities slip away as the Mopar gang seeing red. In contrast, Victory Lane has been shaded blue with a decidedly oval shape to it. For trucks like Carolina Crusher, Overkill, Monster Patrol, and the Executioner, the issue is black and white. To find the silver lining in this sport, one must break through the Chandler blue color barrier. This is Trucks and Tractor Power featuring the best in MTRA monster truck racing. Today, it's the Monster Truck Thunder Drag from the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio. Stop number nine on the Penda Point Series. After eight stops, it has been a Ford dominance. In fact, Andy Brass has three victories, Dan Runte and Coke Cobra with two apiece. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power. To go along that same thought, all eight overall fast ETs this season have been turned in by Ford. We have not seen a non-Ford truck in the finals since stop four in Bloomsburg. In a nutshell, that just kind of underscores the Ford dynasty this season in monster truck competition. But hey, let's not talk about yesterday. Let's talk about today. And with more on today's competition, here's Army Armstrong. Gary, bingo. Up until now, the word win in this series was spelled F-O-R-D. But we may be seeing a turning point. Last time out, Dodge said they had found a handle they've been looking for all year long. Today, two Dodges, Dodge Express and Barefoot, have made it through the first round of competition. They think that they have what it takes now to rein these fours in. Because up until now, just like I say, the word win is F-O-R-D. They're going to try to change that spelling to D-O-D-G-E. Let's see what's going to happen. Back to you, Gary. Army looking now at the uh, current standings. Andy Brass continues to lead over Dan Runty. Then it's Colt Cobra, Fred Schaefer, and Paul Schaefer. No relation. One in a Dodge, one in a Chevy, rounding out the top five. Here are your fast qualifiers today at Canfield. Andy Brass over Colt Cobra. Fred Schaefer in the Dodge barefoot was third. Then Dan Runty, and then Porkowski. So you can see how evenly matched this field appears to be. Now, this was in qualifying. As we look back, a rough ride here for Colt Cobra. Look at this landing. What happens, the right lane at Canfield has a unique, about a four foot drop off. The drivers are aware of it. When you're flying through the air, first thing you want to do when you hit is go to the left. That's what he was trying to do. In round one competition, Ray Porkowski would strike a somewhat similar pose in defeating Paul Schaefer in the Monster Patrol. Hang on, yeah, he, he does so. He comes as close to high side and without going over as anybody. In other highlights from round one, Mark Hall, the executioner, Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Hall has a mechanical problem. The barefoot truck goes on to record a 518 ET. We told you earlier, the barefoot boys are on a mission. They're kind of like the Blues Brothers today. Ninth fastest qualifier, Don Van Loo against Dan Runty, the fourth fast qualifier, and Runty takes the victory in round one. And again, some trouble in the shutdown area for Don Van Loo. Right lane, four foot drop off. Remember, that's in the back of everybody's mind that runs that lane. The back end was wanting to come around on me. We saved it, I don't know how, but it was wanting to take a roll for me. Did you think it was going over? I thought at any minute it was going over. Yeah, it's real close. Other competition from round one, Dan Patrick in Samson against Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. Look at the qualifying, puts these two bad Chevrolets against each other. And all these guys are having trouble in that one lane in the shutdown area, the lane nearest the grandstand. There's Gary Porter's 529, but it was Dan Patrick at 515 that won that and the chance to go to round two. Also in round one, Cold Cobra would defeat Pam Botters in the boogie van. Let me tell you something. Pam Botters is a monster truck driver. If they can come up with some bucks and a good sponsor, they could be major players next year. It's a good family operation. She does a great job of driving, but today, the snake got her. Hey there, youngster. You're on television. Wipe your face off. You too. We'll be back in just a minute. Gary Lee and Army Armstrong back at Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio, as we're preparing for round two competition. Ray Porkowski starts the stage. Bigfoot against the Dodge Express. Barefoot will take on the Power Wheels Bigfoot and the Chevrolet Samson against Snakebite. And there's a look at Andy Brass in the Bigfoot Cruiser. They'll be in the far lane against the red Dodge, the Dodge Express of Ray Porkowski. 
pressure goes on Perkowski here. Andy Brass is in a catbird seat. He's up on the points, got a good truck, knows how it's going to handle. Perkowski comes over. He's the new kid on the block. He's a hired driver, a new truck, a lot of horsepower. So, you know, you got to give the nod on this one to that big blue Ford. But I tell you what, Dodge knows, Perkowski knows, that if he can bump that blue Ford out with that red Dodge, it'll sure help Fred Schaefer to try to stay in the picture for the championship. There's a good view from the backside. The Christmas tree right in the middle. Watch the lights change. There they are. Both drivers leave good together. Brass in no man's land settles down and goes. Yeah, once again, so often Andy Brass has won from no man's land. He gets that chassis to settle down. He applies the horsepower and wins it between the two sets of cars. Exactly. He, he really just basically rolls that first set of cars, and then he gets down to homework at no man's land. We take a look now at the pairing for the second round. Power Wheels Bigfoot. There's Fred Schaefer in barefoot. But uh, before this run, let's go down trackside now as Army's had a chance to catch up with Andy Brass. Andy, the Dodgers keep taking shots at you guys, but they keep falling short. But they're getting closer. You got to admit that. Yes, it is. You know, like I say, this whole year has been some good close racing, but but the Ford Bigfoot's been running good for us. John Kaiser Motors has been producing some horsepower. You know, we've been trying some things with our BDS blowers. Things have been doing out real well for us. You know, our horsepower's come up a little bit. Now all we got to do is be able to keep the horsepower down on the track. You know, we had a little transmission problems, but I think we overcome it today, and I think we're going to go all the way to the finals. Well, Dan Rutte, a close second. He's chipping away at the lead held by... Andy Brass, but it hasn't been easy as Army Armstrong found out following Dan Runte's round one win. Gary, I want you to notice something. It's about 24 inches from the top of the tire to the bottom of the fender here. But look how the fender is being rubbed by the tire. This tire is coming up and hitting so hard when they make contact with the ground, it's actually coming up and making contact with the body. These guys are literally nose diving them into the ground or nose diving at that finish line or diving head first at the finish line, whatever you want to call it. They're hitting a ton when they hit on the other end. Back to you, Gary. That's a combination of 10,000 pounds of truck and a whole lot of shock travel. Oh, you're exactly right. And so much of the technology for the shock absorbers come from the off-road, the Baja type racers, these long arm shocks, these special chassis they're putting together to allow to get that travel in there. They know you've got to make the wheel travel to be on the ground, Gary. Fred Schaefer in the lane nearest the camera and the barefoot truck taking on Dan Runty. It is for Dan Runty. So Runty continues to close in on Andy Brass. And once again, Fred Schaefer really needed this victory to move up in the point standing. Well, both Dodges did. Uh, you know, you had two Fords in this round. They put two Dodges out. That what whoa, whoa. don't want to do that. Well, take a look again at this rough landing for Fred Schaefer. He's over the first set of cars through no man's land. Now watch this rough landing for the Dodge. Well, like I say, they're just literally airing them out, doing anything they can to get to the finish line. And here's Dan Runte. Dan, it seems like that the competitions keep getting closer and closer and closer. It does, Army. We went out there and just ran the fastest time of the day with the 508 in the left lane. A lot of it today has got to do with lights. If you've got a good light, you're there. If you don't, you're not. It's just like drag racing. You're dealing with thousands of seconds. You can lose right at the first inch of the race. That's exactly it. You know, that's what it's all boiling down to. Well, as round two competition continues, here is a good battle. This will be Samson, the Chevrolet of Dan Patrick, and he will stage alongside Colt Cobra in the Ford Snakebite. Dan Patrick brings a ton of knowledge to his own racing team. Been involved in the sport for a long time, but he himself has never had a chance to come over and race head to head with these guys. Dan Yuppie Patrick is what we're going to call it. <laughs> Goes against Cold Cold Cobra Snake, yeah. Out of Cobra Creek, Colorado, and there is the look at the rear of look, look at the look at the hill that he's starting from. That was like a starter block in a track meet. Exactly, but you start on the back side of the block here. It's kind of strange. Patrick is starting to show some strength for the Chevrolet people. Again, Chevrolet is still looking for a leader in this monster truck series. Patrick can run with anybody, but you take it. Well, I don't know. Who it. was it? Who was it? Patrick showing right there. He can run with any of these forwards. A 5'10 for Samson. And what was it for Colt Cobra? 5'10. A dead heat. What are you doing in a case like that? Run it again, I guess. You folks want to run it again? Yeah, I do. Well, let's run it again, I guess. Here is a replay. 
And this is what it looks like when you run a dead heat. Sampson, the far lane, snake bite, the near lane. Look at this. Over that second set of cars right together in the air. And well, both trucks identical. I guarantee you the Sampson team hit crew chief this week by uh, Gene Patterson. They're tickled to death. Cha-ching. We are in Canfield, Ohio, and we have just seen a dead heat between Sampson and Snakebite. I'll tell you, that race was so tough, it was literally knuckle to fang. <laughs> You've been waiting to say that, I know. Better than nose dead to nose. Heat, that's true. Or side by side, or door handle to door handle. 510 for each of these drivers, Snakebite and Dan Patrick, so they'll line them up. We'll run it again. This is neat. I gl I'm glad to see these people doing this because they, all the drivers work so hard to get here. These guys are reputable racers. They respect each other, and they don't want to give up. I don't blame them one bit. Dan Patrick is trying to do everything he can to carry the red, white, and blue for Chevrolet. On the other side of the coin, the privateer, the Cobra, the snake bite guy, he wants to do good for Ford. This is the American way. This is what racing's all about. Let's back them up and do it one more time. You sound like a politician up there stumping for election. No, but if you do vote for me, I'll be more than <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> no politicking on this show. Gold Cobra, the near lane. Dan Patrick, the far lane. Sampson against Snakebite. It was a dead heat before at 510. Let's see what they can crank out this time. It looks like Sampson. Sampson by a nose. Sampson by that fist. Knuckle, knuckle. Knuckle, all right. A 508 for Dan Patrick. And for Gold Cobra, he clocks in at 513. So the Chevrolet will advance. Remember, we could have a fast lead. Yeah, I agree. Back, say, so. I'm just checking the scorecard. That 513 could put him back in there, but right now, you Chevrolet people stand up and smile because you're still alive in this thing. And a kid called Samson, Dan Patrick, the hippie, the yuppie, he put you there. Yeah. Well, Dan, we got good uh, good news. No bad news on this one. 508, that's quick time of the weekend. Plus, you move the Chevrolet over into the next round. Well, if I can stay in the left lane, which I'm going to try to do, I think I got my rhythm down for the weekend. Um, you know, it's, it's getting kind of tough on the other end as far as the jump on my body, but, you know, hey, we're a gladiator here, so we can take that stuff. But, uh, you know, we're here for Chevrolet, and, and we're going to work on them Fords today. We look now at the uh, semifinal tree. We talked about the fast loser. Well, it was Colt Cobra at 513, edging barefoot at 516 for that fast loser position. So there are your pairings now. The fans are ready for semifinal action here at Canfield Fairgrounds. And these monster truck thunder drags are part of the special events performance series, which offer a weekend of four-wheel fun. Pick up the latest aftermarket products with a visit to the manufacturer's midway, or check out the show and shine competition. Contact the special events promotion company to find out when the performance series will be coming to your area. Well, Army, we get ready now for semifinal action. And there is a look at Andy Brass in the Bigfoot Cruiser. What you're looking at there is the notorious cantilever suspension that Bob Chandler came up with. They've kind of kept it under wraps. They keep a low profile on it, but it's working, believe me. Yeah, it gets the, the chassis to settle down in the no man's land. That's where he really makes the horse. Yeah, power. we're talking about all the travel. Well, he his shock absorbers can travel just as much as the other guys, but the wheel will move further through geometry. Now, you kids sitting home watch this on TV, you go ask your math teacher how a cantilever suspension works. I'm sure they'll be happy to tell you. Old Uncle Army and Uncle Gary can't right now. That's right. Well, you can write an essay on it for extra credit points in your geometry class. That's right. But right now, it's both motors, 460 cubic inch, lower drive service prepared Ford engine. We got a race, buddy. Who's it going to be? We just saw a race. What's Who is the number? it going to be? As close as it possibly could be. A 512. Is this another dead heat? A 512 for Colt and a 513 for Andy. Oh my, Colt Cobra. Man, if they were playing hand grenades today, he he's hitting close. That's as close as you can get without having a dead heat. Well, he's already had that. He just wins this one by a TT. Look at this. By a fang. Exactly. A snaggle tooth, if you will. <laughs> Let's go talk to Colt Cobra. Colt, you really don't seem to, to let too many of these other guys bother you. They don't seem to phase you at all, no matter who you're going up against. No, I don't let them intimidate me. Like I said, I may be a privateer out here. Uh, I just went up against, took out the, one of the big boys, uh, the Bigfoot Cruiser there with Andy. A uh, veteran driver, I've been here. Uh, they used to call me the new guy, and uh, now I'm not the new guy anymore. Now I'm the guy that's there every round, taking the wins, putting them out, hopefully going to the finals. 
Well, indeed, it looks like he could be the guy to beat here this afternoon in Canfield as we take a look at another pairing between Dan Patrick in Sampson, the near lane. There's a look at Gene Patterson, his crew chief here this afternoon. Everybody, the, yeah, everybody knows Patterson used to work with the Bigfoot people. He's gone over to work with Patrick, the privateer, and they're doing awfully well for themselves right now, but, uh, you know, pass don't count. This is the only thing that counts right now because you see in the background the big flames of the Power Wheels Bigfoot. The friendship just went on the shelf. They'll pick it up in a, about 200 feet down the road here. Well, Dan Ronte drives the the Bigfoot Power Wheels entry, and he is closing in on Andy Brass in the pin to point series. The last three or four weeks, he's really closed the margin down. A win here would uh, actually, I think, give him the points lead. But you got to get past this Chevrolet. And like I say, Dan Patrick and Patterson, they are going to go for your throat big time. Not going to work for them. That four is going into the final. That will be Dan Runty as he takes that win with a 5 0 0 ET. What a run for Dan Runty and the Bigfoot. And there's the 517 for Dan Patrick. Five flat is awesome with the 10,000 pound truck, Gary. He just left on him, rolled the first hill. Now watch this, plants the horsepower. He is off and flying. And he flies right into the championship round here at Canfield with that run, and here trackside's Dan Runty. Each run, that Chevrolet is trying to pull you guys in. You gotta give credit where credit's due. Gene and Dan are doing a good job, but you're the guy that's going into the next round. That's right, Army. We come out, run a faster time this time than we ran last time. Ford Power Wheels Bigfoot's really hooking up. Uh, Got to thank BDS. We've been working a lot with them as far as horsepower, and we're getting it to the ground. It's working tough. Definitely takes horsepower now. There's no no grins and giggles. It's raw horsepower. That's right. Well, we have some snake fans, and he'll be in the championship when we come back. Welcome back to Canfield. Ready for the championship. Prior to the final matchup, Army caught up with both drivers first. Dan Runty. Well, you know this guy wants you in the worst way. He's going to do anything he can to beat you, but that's racing. That's the caliber of racing we're having right now. That's right. We're going out here. We have lane choice. Did a faster time last run than he did. That's going to make a difference, I think. We just got to go out here, cut a good light, like I said earlier. That's making all the difference in the world, and see, why, see how it comes out. If we can win again here tonight, it'd be two in a row. Be a good shot in the arm. Good shot, or good shot in the arm for us and for it. Get the power down to these fire stones, get it down that track, be first across the line. We'll meet you in the winter, sir. Does the snake have an arm? There's a confident driver right there is Colt Cobra and Dan Ronte for the second straight outing. These two are meeting for the championship. OK, now you got to go back and realize that the last time they met, Ronte kind of shot himself in the foot. Colt Cobra played a little mind game on him and got away with it. Now, I would be willing to bet a week's payment a week of your pay. A week of my pay. Of your pay. It won't happen that again. That will not happen again. Dan Runty has that snake in his crosshairs. He will uh, not I make would, a mistake. I would tend to agree this time he'll not be snookered like he was the last time. And if you didn't see our show last week, we can tell you that these same two staged. Colt jumped and got back or burped it, as he said. Got burped back it. on the break. And then when Runte burped it, he couldn't get it stopped. He red lighted. Snake burped and gold and the big Watch foot it now. <laughs> All right, here you are, Dan Runte and Colt Cobra. Dan trying to take over the Penda Point Series lead after uh, nine events of a 13 race series. Good heads up start, Colt Cobra. Dan it. Runte is there. Dan Runte has him. And he has picked up the pen to points lead with the points picked up here this afternoon. Gold Cobra 517, and Dan will go a 508. So Dan Runte takes over the pen to point series lead. Once again, this was the ninth race of 13 events as he goes around Andy Brass, Colt Cobra's third, Schaefer is fourth, and Patrick is now fifth. Army? <laughs> Gary, I tell you what, we're down here with the uh, new national points leader being congratulated by his crew by 380 points, buddy. You're the guy they're all chasing now. Congratulations. Thanks, Army. Like I said, the truck's been working really well. We got to thank the crew. Every round we went out here, ran a little bit faster. The truck's working good. Firestone tires are hooking up. Everything's going well for us. We really can't complain about everything, anything. You know, it is, 
it doesn't come easy though. I mean, between every round, everybody is working like crazy. I mean, you're you're not backing into this thing. You're definitely having to earn your way. No, I mean, there's something different here that we ain't seen in a while either. Is the lanes are real similar here, so there's not a real big lane choice. I feel the left lane's a little better, but that's my preference, and that's got a lot to do with the way things are going here. There are actually 230 points now separating first and second. Our congratulations to Dan Running. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond V Sports. Bring the excitement of Mud Monster Truck Racing into your living room with Diamond Peace, newest horsepower hit. Trust me, you're in there with this third strike. Shake, battle, and roll three. It's all new and all you come to expect, from the outrageous mishaps of the monster truck racing to the raucous rampage through the mud bogs. Shake, battle, and roll three is a must for any and every monster truck fan in the house. Over 60 minutes of jarring and pounding mud and mayhem and accelerated aerobatics you don't want to miss. To get your copy of Shake, Battle, and Roll 3, call 1-800-438-8585 or send $19.95, check or money order, plus $4 shipping and handling to the address shown on your screen or charge it on your MasterCard, Visa, or Discovery card. Call 1-800-438-8585 for Shake, Battle, and Roll 3.